Hey guys, in case you didn't know, George had a fairly long entry on his blog yesterday updating us on what he's been doing. Long story short, it's not great news for us fans waiting for the winds of winter. But let's get into this. Random updates and bits o news. I look around and I don't know where 2021 went. I blinked and it was gone. Not a year that I'm going to mourn much, any more than 2020. A global pandemic, so many deaths, including friends of mine, as well as celebrities of all sorts. Politics grown increasingly toxic, it was a year best forgotten. Okay, so I'm going to break here and talk about George's mindset. People around him are dying. George writes a lot about this. I know this is sort of cliche during the pandemic and perhaps in life in general, but I need to bring up one recent death that must have really shaken George. This is John Jose Miller, a sci-fi author who died on January 5th of this year at the age of 67 and who was one of George R. Martin's good friends. He wrote a bunch of wildcard stories and even co-wrote a wildcards book with George called Dead Man's Hand, the one where Squisher appears. But he wasn't really that successful of an author otherwise. And, well, does he look like anyone we know? Also, by coincidence, Miller was from the New York area, moved to New Mexico, never had children, and married a woman named Gail. Also, in the picture, he's wearing a Grateful Dead shirt, one of George's favorite bands, Werewoods being named for Bob Weir of the Grateful Dead. The point being a friend of George, a peer of George, one who was so very much like him, passed away, and he was six years George's junior. Continuing on, I did, however, get a lot of work done in 2021. An enormous amount of work, in truth. I seem to have an enormous number of projects. I'm not complaining. I like working, writing, editing, producing. There's nothing I like better than storytelling. I know, I know, for many of you out there, only one of those projects matters. I'm sorry for you, they all matter to me. And so, yeah, George gets snippy here about requests to finish The Winds of Winter. I sometimes wonder about how much day-to-day -day pressure George is confronted with. He's shut off comments on his blog, so none there, and he doesn't really go to cons anymore, so he's not running into fans in person too much. Yes, if you read his Twitter replies, it's 75% of what's there, but is he even handling his own Twitter account? I don't know. Is it from his publisher? Perhaps. Maybe he's just remembering all of the pestering from years ago, assuming it's still ongoing. And it is still ongoing. Anyway, here's the most important paragraph. Yes, of course, I'm still working on the winds of winter. I've stated that a hundred times in a hundred venues. Having to restate it endlessly is just wearisome. I made a lot of progress on winds in 2020 and less in 2021, but less is not none. Oof, this is not good news. Okay, so in a previous blog post, George did write that 2020 was his most productive year with the winds of winter, where he wrote hundreds and hundreds of pages with hundreds more to write to complete wins. Now, we assume he's talking about manuscript pages when he talks about pages. A Dance with Dragons was 422,000 words, which is 1,700 manuscript pages. So even if we assume hundreds and hundreds is literal, that is 200 and 200, and we include all of the sample chapters left over from A Dance with Dragons, we could still be a thousand manuscript pages away. The rosiest interpretation out there on the status of the Winds of Winter is that he wrote hundreds and hundreds of pages in 2020, and he's hundreds of pages away, meaning he needed to do just half of what he did in 2020 to complete things. Like 200 or 300 manuscript pages. But we don't get any sense of that here. There is no nearly complete, there is no, it will happen this year. It's left very open. In fact, he's rather down on his productivity, saying it was low, but not nothing. Not nothing is a pretty low bar. Had he written hundreds of manuscript pages, he would have said, I wrote hundreds of manuscript pages in 2021. But instead he's told us that he wrote not nothing. And he says nothing of what he's done in 2022 or the prospects of what he will do in 2022. Anyway, things get really bad from there. The world of Westeros, the world of A Song of Ice and Fire, is my number one priority, and will remain so until the story is told. But Westeros has become bigger than The Winds of Winter, or even A Song of Ice and Fire. In addition to Winds, I also need to deliver the second volume of Archmaester Gildane's history, Fire and Blood. Thinking of calling that one Blood and Fire, rather than just F and B Volume 2. Got a couple hundred pages of that one written, but there's still a long way to go. 
Oh gosh, this is horrible. This is actually really, really bad. So George used to say that the Winds of Winter was his number one priority, but now he's shifting things. Westeros is now his number one priority, which includes other stuff. This is a massive shift in his mindset. It's all of Westeros now. It's all his number one priority. Now, weirdly, he brings up Fire and Blood Volume 2, which he had specifically said he wouldn't work on until after the release of The Winds of Winter. In fact, he had previously said Volume 1 wasn't going to be released until after The Winds of Winter, but lo and behold, it was released. Now, I have to say, Volume 1 of Fire and Blood was pretty easy to put out. Sons of the Dragon, The Rogue Prince, and The Princess and the Queen had already been written. He just needed to write some filler material on Aegon and Jaehaerys, and he could push it out the door. Volume 2, though, that's largely unwritten. A couple hundred manuscript pages is nothing. Now, there was a big reason that George didn't want to publish Volume 2 of Fire and Blood, and that's because big events like Summer Hall would be covered in it. But now we see a shift, and I think it has to do with what he writes next. I need to write more of the Duncan Egg novellas, tell the rest of their stories, especially since there's a television series about them in development. Ah, so here we go. We find out that a Dunkin' Egg series is in development. Previously, George had said he wouldn't write more Dunkin' Egg until after the Winds of Winter, but now he's back on the Dunkin' Egg train. He wants to write more material. And let's remember that Dunkin' Egg die at Summerhall. Whatever happened at Summerhall, a Dunkin' Egg series will spoil. So now George would be fine with publishing Fire and Blood Volume 2. This is why he wants to get back to writing them. It's all tie-in material for a Dunkin' Egg show. The Winds of Winter, though, that already had a show. There's a lavish coffee table book coming later this year, an illustrated condensed version of Fire and Blood, done with Elio Garcia and Linda Antonsen, my partners on The World of Ice and Fire, and my Fever River art director, Raya Golden. And another book after that, a who's who in Westeros. And that's just the books. Yeah, absolutely no one cares about a condensed illustrated version of Fire and Blood or a who's who in Westeros book. It's recycled material, George is writing nothing new for it. This is clearly just a bone being thrown to George's publisher. There are also the successor shows. Those have taken a ton of my time and attention this year. I've seen some comments out there questioning how much I'm involved in these new series. The answer is, a lot. Deeply, heavily involved in every one of the new shows. It's my world, and while I've been working closely with some fantastic writers and showrunners, ultimately, it's up to me to try to keep the canon well, canon a cull, and to do all I can to help make the new shows great. And I love these stories too. Yeah, this is a weird paragraph. Does George think that people are worried that he's not involved in the new shows? Because it's quite the opposite. We're worried that he is involved. We're worried that he's wasting his time when what we want is for him to finish The Winds of Winter. We don't want him involved. The analogy I came up with on this is a girlfriend who is dumping you but assuring you that she's going to work really hard on her next relationship. Because her next relationship with someone else is going to be really, really great. So far, I'm very excited. House of the Dragon has wrapped in London and is now in post-production. What I've seen, I have loved. I'm eager to see more. I'm excited about the other successor shows as well, however. I'm dying to tell you about them, but I'm not supposed to. So, well, maybe there are a few things I can tell you. Things that HBO has previously announced, or hinted at, or... We are developing live action shows for HBO and animated shows for HBO Max. No, can't tell you how many, but it's my hope that a number of these shows will get on the air. Not all, no, it's never all, but more than one. I certainly hope so. Some of the ideas we are working on are quite different in tone and approach than what has gone before, and that thrills me. The world of Westeros, and Essos, etc., is huge, and there is room in it for many types of stories about a wide range of characters. Okay, so we clearly see what's going on here with HBO. Cinematic universes are now the new hip thing, and the idea is that you can market many different types of shows under the same franchise. We have seen this with Star Wars, Star Trek, Marvel, DC, things ranging from comedies to drama to action, things focused at kids, young adults, women, men, this is clearly what HBO is thinking about. Though I imagine they need to wait to see how House of the Dragon does. If it bombs, it will signal that the Game of Thrones franchise is dead. If it does well, we are going to see a cinematic universe with many shows. And we will likely never see The Winds of Winter. 
What can I tell you? Well, let's see. Bruno Heller, the creator and showrunner of Rome, is writing his pilot script for the Corlys Velaryon series. That one started out as Nine Voyages, but now we're calling it The Sea Snake, since we wanted to avoid having two shows with numbers in the title. The other one, 10,000 Ships, the Nymeria series. Amanda Siegel, our showrunner, has delivered a couple drafts of that one, and we are forging ahead. So yeah, normally I would say a show specifically on Corlys Velaryon doesn't have much of a shot of making it. But Bruno Heller is a huge name in the biz. Rome, The Mentalist, Gotham, Pennyworth. And George felt it necessary to include some random pages shoved in on Corlys in the middle of Fire and Blood. So I guess he thinks the idea has some potential. But again, whether this does well mostly has to do with the success of House of the Dragon. Amanda Siegel is also a pretty big name. The Good Wife, Person of Interest Without a Trace. But I just don't see a Nymeria story in a completely different time period, in a completely different location, piquing any interest. I love the Dornish, you love the Dornish, but the average fan doesn't like the Dornish. The third of the live action shows is the Duncan Egg series, helmed by Steve Conrad. My team and I have had some great sessions with Steve and his team, and we really hit it off. He's determined to do a faithful adaptation of the stories, which is exactly what I want. These characters and stories are very precious to me. The first season will be an adaptation of the first novella, The Hedge Knight. Contrary to what you may have read online, the show will not be called Duncan Egg, which could be mistaken for a sitcom by viewers unfamiliar with the stories. We're leaning towards A Knight of the Seven Kingdoms for the series title, though The Hedge Knight has its partisans as well. And so we definitely get a sense that this third series has George's full attention. He is focused on a faithful adaptation of precious material, the Duncan Egg stories. And as I noted earlier, he is suddenly focused on returning to writing them. I can definitely see some parallels here with Game of Thrones. We have a relative unknown, Steve Conrad, trying to do a faithful adaptation. He has material for three seasons, one season for each story, with a promise from George that more are on the way. Writing a Duncan Egg story should be easier than writing a full novel, though I can see the same thing happening again. On the animated side, well, I'm not allowed to talk about most of what's happening except to say that things are moving very fast. And I love, love, love some of the concept art I'm seeing. And wait, come to think of it, the news leaked several months ago that one of the animated shows would be set in E.T. That's true. Our working title is The Golden Empire, and we have a great young writer on that one too. And I think the art and animation is just going to be beautiful. I would tell you more if I could. I don't think I can say a word about the other animated shows. Not yet. I, for one, cannot think of a worse idea for a series. Thousands of years in the past in E.T., a city that George has written almost nothing about. It's incredibly tangential, and I don't see why anyone should care. So, there is a lot going on. And House of the Dragon is coming soon. That's what you will see first. And me, I will continue to work with the writers and showrunners and directors and producers on all of these shows. Plus, Roadmarks for HBO, and Dark Winds for AMC, and Wild Cards for UCP and Peacock, and Night of the Cooters should be finished this month. Roadmarks is a show based on a book by Roger Zelazny. Dark Winds is based on the Lee Porn and Chi novels by Tony Hillerman. And Wild Cards is fucking Wild Cards. Night of the Cooters is based on a book by Howard Waldrop. I think Dark Winds has a really cool premise, but the world is absolutely inundated with superhero team stories. Wild Cards is mostly an exercise in George trying to get his friends' attention, as is Night of the Cooters and Roadmarks. And in addition to that, let me say, once again, yes, I am still working on The Winds of Winter. Well, it certainly doesn't sound like it. So all in all, the blog post seems to point to George being fairly invested in side projects and very invested in Dunkin' Egg. He writes the most about it and is the most glowing about it. He is working with the showrunner and he appears ready to return to writing Dunkin' Egg stories. The thing is, to really expand on the Dunkin' Egg stories, which are actually pretty small in scope, one needs more background on the Blackfire Rebellions and eventually Summerhall. And so in addition to going back to Dunkin' Egg, George may waste time going back to Fire and Blood Volume 2. So yeah, there's no sugarcoating it. This is very bad news for the Winds of Winter, though maybe we'll get some more Dunkin' Egg. I'm sorry to be a downer, but thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.